Hey everybody, welcome back to another video within the Generative AI series. And in this video, we'll be talking about how we can store embeddings into ChromaDB. Now, ChromaDB happens to be an open source embedding database. So up till now, we know what embeddings are, what, like in, in a more verbose term, what vector embeddings are. We know how to evaluate similarity between multiple vector embeddings by using cosine similarity. We know how to generate vector embeddings using OpenAI. But the example or a demonstration that we worked upon in the last video happens to be very basic. So we just created an array through in some sentences. We had a query string and we evaluated, uh, generated and evaluated uh, the cosine similarity upon the embeddings that we got. But in real life scenarios, we'll be dealing with huge images, huge videos, and huge documents. So we need to create vector embeddings for these entities and store them somewhere. Obviously, we cannot store everything within the memory. We need some sort of a persistence when we sort of generate these embeddings. So hence, that's where ChromaDB sort of comes into the equation. So, uh, so as the introduction states, ChromaDB makes it easy to build LLM apps by making knowledge, facts, and skills pluggable for LLMs. And here's a little depiction in terms of a diagram. So you can create as many documents in, in text or you can even store embeddings directly if you have already generated them. But what we want is we want to encapsulate this whole process. We don't want to generate embeddings ourselves per se. So what ChromaDB offers that whenever you feed in documents, whenever you feed in text strings, it automatically uses an embedding function to sort of convert them into embeddings. And you can query these embeddings directly or you can query these embeddings through text, which is sort of a huge plus for us and a huge convenience. Alongside Chroma gives you the tools to store embeddings and their metadata. Yes, uh, if you have documents and text documents and if you have some additional information that you wish to store, so you can also do that. For example, this can, if, you're, if you're generating an embedding out of a PDF book, so you can store um, the author's name, you know, some bio about the author within the metadata and stuff like that, which you can also leverage in terms of, you know, uh, searching through uh, LLMs. So yeah, Chroma prioritizes simplicity and developer productivity, exactly something that we are looking for. Analysis on top of search, it also happens to be very quick. So let's get started with it. So we have a huge uh, support in terms of Python here. We'll just go ahead and install pip install ChromaDB. We'll create a ChromaDB client, pretty similar to OpenAI. And if you're like familiar with NoSQL and its terminology, then it's exactly the same with vector databases as well. So you create a collection, collection would be the database name, and you can add some text documents to these collections. So here's an example, uh, currently these uh, documents are in form of strings and within the metadata you can store their sources individually obviously these corresponds to uh, each other uh, what it requires uh, which is like a cherry on the top is that you'll have to provide some unique identifiers for each of the documents that you have and as stated here you can even store embeddings directly but that's not something that we need and you can query your embeddings just like that, just by giving the text, just like uh, how normal databases work. So this is great. I mean, uh, creates a bunch of uh, convenience for us. Also, uh, a quick tip about ChromaDB. Since it's open source, it will be running on a client. You can make it persist or you can uh, switch it to the in-memory mode as well. So that's up to you. So if you want to switch it up to being persistent, it would require you to give it some sort of a directory where it will be storing all the embeddings. 
So we're back with the very same problem, with the very same data set for now, and with the very same query that we used in the last video. So let's move forward with it. The very first thing we'll do is create collection. So just like we got it from the documentation, we'll create a HTTP client. Obviously, we need to work it over HTTP. And we'll create a collection, and we call it test. Just a bit of a little housekeeping. So if the collection is not none, which means uh, it has some data in it, then we obviously need to clear it up because uh, this will only work when we're rerunning the program. So whenever we rerun the program, we want to clear the existing collection. So that's what we're doing over here. Otherwise, we'll just create the text collection and we'll just go with it. In case we run into a problem, uh, we're again uh, repeating the same thing over here. We return the collection right here. The next step is we need to add uh, something to the collection itself. So pretty simple. We'll just add the documents data. And this is our data right here. And we need a bit. Oh, yeah. So as mentioned before, so Chroma DB takes in a bunch of IDs uh, specific to uh, the documents. So what we're doing here, we're creating a bunch of unique UUIDs for each of our data elements. The next step is obviously getting the results. So here we just query, uh, we provide a particular query and we query our collection. Again, we're keeping the results to be top two. We're converting uh, our results into a pretty JSON format and we'll be printing it out. And here we're just, you know, calling in our collection and adding to our collection. Basically, we're just calling each of these functions. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and run it. So we have hello and we expect these two items to be shown up in our results. So let's see. Okay. So yeah, uh, one thing which let me show it to you. So we need to, uh, in order to make it work since uh, it requires some sort of a server and uh, in order to communicate with your backend, obviously you'll need to run it and it's just simple Chroma run. So it was running before, but I just wanted to demonstrate it. Now it's running on localhost 8000. Perfect. Let's go ahead and run our script, Chroma DB intro. And there we go. Perfect. So we have hello world and hello universe. These are the IDs. These are the distance computed. Uh, we didn't provide any metadata. And these are topics. So this is what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to encapsulate the whole process that we were doing. And we are actually using a vector database for that, for all of our storage for all of our curing. So that's amazing. So that's it for this video. Uh, tell me what do you think about it. If you haven't explored ChromaDB by yourself, I strongly recommend that you do. I'm going to hook the documentation within the description section. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.